Good morning everybody and welcome along to worship this morning. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Kenny Maddock. I'm an elder in the congregation and along with my wife Christine, I'm one of the leaders of our young people's group called Climb. The service this morning will be led by myself with support and help from some of those young people who will be leading us in prayer and also in our readings this morning. Before we get started, I wanted to give you all an update on some of the stuff that we've been getting up to during lockdown. So we started back in April by meeting together with the younger children in our group from Catch and Crawl every second Sunday on Zoom, coordinated by our children's and families worker Jennifer. And around about April and May, sort of the end of April and beginning of May, we started to meet on our own um, to delve into the Bible in a bit more detail. And we also then decided to start doing that every other week, alternately with a week where we just played games and had some fun together, quite often involving food. Um, so ranging from things like just regular toast right the way through to full, break, full Scottish breakfasts with eggs and bacon and sausage and all sorts, depending on how lazy I was or depending on how much effort the kids had put in as well. It's been a great way of keeping in touch with everybody and making sure that everybody feels like there's still a community of trust and care and love surrounding them in what is obviously a very difficult and testing time. Just now I'd also like to say thank you to some of the people that have been a massive support to, to Christine and I during this very difficult time. To Jennifer, our children's and families worker, we cannot thank you enough and uh, for all the work that you've done coordinating all the activities and everything that's been going on in the background, so thank you for that. To Jackie, Lynn and Laura, our fellow leaders of Catch and Crawl, thank you for everything that you guys have done to support us in prayer and thoughtful counsel and guidance throughout this very difficult and testing time. And now, as we start to move towards our worship service this morning, I'd like to invite Leah to lead us in prayer. Let us pray together. Gracious God of all, we thank you that we can come to you in prayer, that for all your greatness and wonder and holiness, we can speak with you as to a friend. We thank you that we can open our hearts to you, that we can pour out our innermost souls and share our deepest thoughts in the knowledge that you are there always ready to listen and understand. So now once more we lay our lives before you open to your gaze, the bad as well as the good, the doubt as well as the faith, the sorrow as well as the joy, the despair as well as the hope. We bring anger as well as the peace, the hatred as well as the love, the confusion as well as is certainly the fear as well as the trust. Gracious God, we bring these, not with pride or any sense of arrogance, but honestly recognising that you know us through and through. Hear now our prayer. Amen. This morning's reading is taken from Psalm 90, verses 1 to 6 and 13 to 17. First one will be read by Megan and the second one will be read by Amy. Lord, through all the generations you have been our home. Before the mountains were born, before you gave birth to the earth and the world, from beginning to end you are God. You turn people back to dust saying return to dust you mortals. For you a thousand years are as a passing day, as brief as a few night hours. You sweep people away like dreams that disappear. They are like grass that spring up in the morning. In the morning it blooms and blossoms, but by the evening it is dry and withered. O oh Lord, come back to us. How long will you delay? Take pity on your servants. Satisfy us each morning with your unfailing love, so we may sing for joy to the end of our lives. Give us gladness in proportion to our former misery, Replace the evil years with good. Let us, your servants, see you work again. Let our children see your glory. And may the Lord, our God, show his approval and make our efforts successful. Yes, make our efforts successful. Thanks to Megan and Ailey for taking the reading for us this morning. I'd like to start by asking you all a question. How many times have you used the phrase once in a lifetime? Maybe you've used it to describe a holiday 
or an event that you've been to or something that happened with your family. Look at what's happening just now. Right now. Covid has been spoken about as being a once in a lifetime or maybe even once in a generation event. But just for some people within living memory, you have the Spanish flu pandemic. And that was the last time that something like this happened from 1918 to 1920. And you look back at articles, posters, archive footage of what happened to try and understand how the world coped back then and compare it to how we're coping now. And look at the psalm that we've just listened to this morning that was read for us. There's an American Old Testament scholar and theologian called Walter Brueggemann and he draws our attention to the title and explains it to us. The title is intended to draw the reader back to the time when the Israelites were in exile. The psalm responds to the question of the fall of Jerusalem. And this psalm itself was probably written after the Israelites' exile in Babylon in 586 BC, which was after the original exile when the Israelites left Egypt under Moses. The psalm deliberately draws the reader back to the original exile in the wilderness to remind us of the importance of the relationship that the Israelites had at the time with Yahweh, or God. And this was the relationship that shaped the life of Israel. The psalm's also structured to remind us of the brevity of our lives, but also that it's not important for us to focus on that, to focus on how short and how potentially insignificant our lives can seem in the face of Almighty God. What is important is that we concentrate and focus on a relationship with that eternal God who is watching over us and the rising and the passing of every generation that has been and will come. Right now, we find ourselves in the wilderness, much like the Israelites did during their exile under Moses and the enforced exile after the fall of Jerusalem. The Israelites were lost during this time. Their temple had been destroyed. They had no king, they had no home. Everything that had seemed permanent to them had been destroyed and taken from them. Right now, in our lives, in the world, we're going through a once-in-a-lifetime event. Nobody can deny that. But the psalm was written to remind the Israelites of what had happened before. That there is experience of this in their history, in their heritage. It's there to support them and help them through this time. By reminding them that what had happened before, by reminding them that it had happened before, and that they got through it by maintaining a relationship with God as a community. The Old Testament reading for today is from Deuteronomy, and it describes the death and the burial of Moses. Moses, the man who had led the Israelites, Israelites out of Egypt and into the wilderness, who had been a permanent feature for so, so long, but here he was. Dying, failing. He led the, Jerus the Israelites for so long towards the promised land. He prophesied to them about the promised land, and yet he wasn't going to get to see it. Moses was a man of incredible faith. He had a strong, trusting relationship with God. But for all of Moses' greatness, this passage reminds us of the ultimate truth. Despite all that Moses had done, only God is eternal. Look at all that's been going on around the world in the last year, beyond COVID. There's a civil war raging in Yemen that has lasted over six years and is continuing to kill thousands of people and displace hundreds of thousands of people in the, Asia, in the Middle Eastern Peninsula. Just yesterday, there was a police shooting in Nigeria of protesters protesting police brutality. Israel continues to bomb and attack the Gaza Strip. There are anti-government protest protests going on in Hong Kong and have been for years over the rule of, over the rule of the government. 
Beirut was torn apart by a massive explosion caused by some fertiliser that had been left in a warehouse untended. We've seen thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people protest in favour of the Black, Li Black Lives Matter mo movement. There's been a terrorist killing of a French teacher. Armenia and Azerbaijan have almost been at war over a disputed region. And there have been nationwide protests in Belarus at the outcome of their latest election. Whilst these events like the pandemic will eventually be overcome and resolved, there is a degree of permanence in them all. There will always be unrest. There will always be injustice. And there will always be brothers and sisters in Christ who need our love, our support and our prayers, no matter how far away they may be or seem. Right now, we find ourselves in a similar situation to the Israelites. We don't have a temple. We don't have a king like the Israelites would have had either. But we are separated from each other. We're separated from our church, from our ability to be a community, at least as we know how to be a community. We have lost something that we took for granted. We have lost something that seemed so permanent and to be a feature in our lives on a daily, weekly basis. The psalm also reminds us that Despite the focus of the modern age being on individualism as the triumphant behaviour that we see day in, day out and how news stories are reported or how we hear about the latest person who's become a self-made billionaire, in this passage, the community is who experience God, not the individual. And one thing does remain throughout all of this. We need to maintain our close relationship with God throughout these once-in-a-lifetime moments that come to challenge us all. Right now, we may be divided by rules and regulations and lockdowns, but we are united as a community of God, ready to take on the once-in-a-lifetime challenges that seem to just keep coming at us right now. We will prevail. We will overcome. We will be together again, united in praise and worship of God. That is permanent. That is is everlasting. That is the Almighty God, our Saviour. Amen. Loving God, help us to remember all that you have done for us during this time in the wilderness. Like the Israelites before us, we feel lost, scared, and unsure of what the future holds. Guide us, protect us, heal those that need healing, comfort those that need comfort. Help us to remember that there is so much going on in the world that is once in a lifetime. Inspire us to be agents of your kingdom of love, compassionate hospitality, and dedication of service to your name. We pray for those who have been displaced by the wars raging throughout the world. Bring them peace, hope and a place to call home. Help us to remember that in times of trial, persecution and unrest, it is the community of God which conquers. Not the individualism that our society often declares to be the solution. Unite us as we strive to be better in all that we do. Guide us now as we pray for different situations throughout the world. Our next piece is a photo nom montage prayer. It's things we are thankful for as a group and prayers for others.
the stars in heaven Faithful you are Faithful There will be no separation Faithful you are Your love does not let go not let go of me No matter what I've done Always faithful No matter what I've done to you Faithful Shining like the stars in heaven Faithful of eternity reaching humanity stars in heaven faithful you are faithful there will be no separation faithful you are your love does not let go And now we'll close today's service by saying the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>